Introducing live for the first time ever. It's Comic Book Workers United. Oh, this is big, everyone. I am beyond excited. It's the first time comic book workers have ever formed a union. So, 10 out of the 12 eligible employees at Image Comics released a statement November 1st, 2021, that they were forming a union. The Comic Book Workers United. It's no surprise that the first comic book workers union is coming out of Image Comics. Image Comics was formed in 1992 after the great exodus shook the comic book industry. Jim Valentino, Eric Larson, Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, and Rob Liefeld were getting sick and tired of Marvel and DC fucking them over. At the time, and still today, in most of the major comic book companies, comic book writers do not own the intellectual property rights to their own characters. Valentino, Larson, Liefeld, McFarlane, Lee, and Silvestri were like, fuck that, and formed their own company, Image Comics where creators contractually retain their intellectual property rights and creative control without some studio suits butting in. So the history and the company atmosphere is very fuck the man. One of the co-founders and current owners, Jim Valentino, has even made several social media posts supporting unions. All these posts seem to have been mysteriously deleted, but I did find this one. Hmm. I think some background is needed to understand how the comic book industry works. The whole industry is a house of cards. So comic book companies like Image, Marvel, DC, Boom, Dark Horse, IDW, etc. will let Diamond know what series they want to release. Diamond is a printing slash distributing company that has a strangled hold on the comic book industry since 1982. Diamond will then let the individual brick and mortar stores see the upcoming releases. The comic book store owners will look at their records and see what their customers have bought and then guess which series will sell best and how many single issues they will need. Then they'll order that from Diamond. And based on those orders, Diamond will decide which series will be worth it. They'll tell the comic book companies what series to greenlight. The companies will make those series and send them to Diamond. Diamond will print and distribute the comics to the stores. And the stores will sell the comics directly to the customers. For example, let's say DC Comics is floating around the idea of a new Batgirl comic. Where... She falls for a lesbian assassin robot or something. DC will ring up Diamond. Diamond will contact all the individual stores. The owners will compare this new Batgirl series to all the series they've been selling or not selling that are similar. Such as maybe they'll look at their Apollo Midnight comics or Batgirl comics or Batwoman comics and see how well those are selling. And from that, then they'll decide if they want this series or how many issues they want. All the owners send their orders to Diamond, and if enough stores want it, the series will be made. Anyone see a problem with this? This whole rigmarole hinges on the store owners being able to accurately guess what their customers want. This means that a lot of store owners aren't willing to go for smaller, more experimental, riskier series. It used to be that the stores could sell back to Diamond any issues that didn't sell, but now small business owners are taking all the risk. This is part of why it's been a struggle to get more diverse characters. Store owners didn't think they would sell for a long time. 
But an even bigger massive problem is that the entire industry is dependent on people being there in person to buy an issue, something that's just not happening in a pandemic. Comics have come tumbling down. In a time when so many people are unemployed or in danger of being homeless, the latest X-Force issue just isn't a priority. I love Batgirl, but I'm not risking my health for Infinite Frontiers, though that new series looks really cool. This is part of why DC and Marvel are really pushing their online options, and just like all other workers in this pandemic, the comic book workers are feeling the squeeze, and the CBWU wants to make things better in the industry. Here are their nine demands. Number one, to foster a more competitive industry as a whole, through salary and workload transparency for all existing and proposed job titles. Employees industry-wide should know what they and their peers are working for and what they can expect from future employment. Yes, 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 I love this one. Hiding your salary from your coworkers is only helping your bosses. Share how much you make so that you and your coworkers can know if they're being fairly compensated don't let your boss hide in polite shadows. Number two, improve staff morale through annual staff and management reviews to assess performance, workload, and whether there is a clear need to expand a department, craft a new role, or increase compensation for employees who have taken on a larger quantity or more complex suit of tasks. So important. All unnecessary at least according to your boss who is probably removed from the day-to-day -day work personnel are gone it's a skeleton crew there needs to be a clear reevaluation of how much work folks are doing so people can get paid fairly and get as much support as they need and fight creator burnout number three the creation of a more transparent company culture through monthly all-hands meetings so all staff can better understand both the current and future priorities, responsibilities, and workloads of other departments. Same as number two, if people are taking on more work, they should get more support. And it's better if people know how much work other departments are doing so they can be more empathetic if there's a problem. Number four, increase knowledge retention through the implementation of detailed record keeping and procedure documentation for all tasks deemed essential to any given role. These documents are to include detailed and explicit descriptions and instructions for all expected job duties. Yes. Don't let greedy corporations add more work and more tasks if that's not why someone was hired. Know what your given role is. Number five, improve career mobility for all staff through stricter adherence to the company's stated intent to offer open positions up to qualified existing employees prior to opening them up to the public. Yes, promote in-house. Number six, the continuation of remote work for any employee who requests it and the creation of a detailed policy outlining how the company provides reasonable accommodations and supplies for remote employees. The pandemic has removed the necessity for the company to pay for a central office space, utilities, etc with employees in some cases now shouldering 100% of costs that should be shared by the employer, costs such as internet, power, furnishings, and other office supplies, computer hardware, and related maintenance costs to work from their own personal devices. The company must outline an equitable arrangement for sharing a reasonable percentage of those costs. Companies should provide all the equipment their employees need, and remote work is so good for disabled people, those without cars or no money for transportation, or just anyone who doesn't have the spoons for commuting. 
Number seven. Better overall product through the immediate addition of staff, particularly in production and marketing departments. Our creators, retailers, and readers can expect white glove attention for all the books we've published. Books which will go to press with fewer errors, fewer delays, and a more robust marketing presence due to a more strategic approach to staffing in reasonable proportion to the actual quantity of output we generate. I mean, I wouldn't mind if Ordinary Gods came out sooner. Hell yeah. Number eight, a long-term actionable plan to address the overall lack of diversity in both general staff and management. The authors, artists, and readers who bring comics to life have never been homogenous and the stories we publish can only be improved by staffing our organization in a way that more accurately reflects the demographics of our creators, our readership, and the nation as a whole. <laughs> yes! 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 Number nine. Renewed commitment to company values through the addition of a collective voting option to immediately cancel publication of any titles whose creators have been found to have engaged in abuse, sexual assault, racism, xenophobia, homophobia, transphobia, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, ableism, etc. until such time as said creators have engaged in meaningful reparations toward affected persons. This will probably be the most controversial request given all the hullabaloo over cancel culture, but I think it's very needed. I am in complete favor of worker-run companies. I feel like workers should be able to say what values they want the companies they work at day in and day out to have. Right now, there is this cancel culture where companies will cancel someone if it forwards their bottom line or ignore people's horrific behavior if they can generate millions. Let's just look at Disney. Some right-wing troll dug up offensive tweets from James Gunn and astroturfed a movement to remove him and Disney caved, though they later rehired him. However, Jeremy Renner has been accused by his ex-wife for threatening to kill her with a gun, and right now he's got a Hawkeye miniseries coming out on Disney+. Plus. It's clear that in the one case with James Gunn, he's more in the spotlight where more eyes are on what happens. Disney had to protect their image. But Jeremy Renner? Who even cares? So Disney calculates that keeping him won't affect their image and they'll get the content from him even if they have to platform a horrible person. But this proposal will let the worker say no. I don't want this person to represent the company I work for. This proposal is revolutionary for forwarding the amount of input workers will have in their workplace and for the second part of the proposal. Not only will people just be canceled, but there is a path offered back, a chance at reconciliation through reparations toward the affected persons. Beautiful. It will require people who cause harm to work to learn to do better and to make amends. The best part is that this approach recognizes the complexities in each case instead of just a blanket canceling. Different behaviors call for a different response. I honestly love this so much. I think it would be a much better policy than hush hush, NDA, closed door, arbitration victims get shuffled through every day. It's out in the open and completely transparent. So how has Image Comics responded? Well, aside from frantically deleting all pro-union posts on Facebook, Image Comics has requested that the NLRB oversee a secret ballot initiative to determine if their union-eligible employees want to be represented by the Communication Workers of America Union. So what's the problem? That sounds good. 
But 10 out of the 12 union eligible employees already publicly announced their support for the CBWU and already released a statement saying that they wanted to be represented by the Communication Workers of America. So it's just a waste of time. Before bargaining, a company has to either voluntarily recognize a union or wait for a secret ballot initiative to decide if their workers want a union. So voluntary recognition is a quicker process than waiting for an election. Since Image Comics is waiting on an election, that buys them time to decide what to do and maybe do a little union busting. But as of right now, we're just waiting to see the election results. I mean, we already know the election results. 10 out of 12 want the union. I'm just so disappointed in a company that was started as a result of DC and Marvel fucking over their workers going on to fuck the over their workers. It's like the rebellious teens who hate their parents becoming their parents. Can we get around that jalapeno poppers for me and the boys, please? I've been saving a lot of money with Progressive lately, so. Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents. Well, I was stuck in bed, and you were stuck here with me. But now you may go and live your lives. Go, be cute, keep gay, be crime. Bye! Julie, do the, uh, the thing. Don't freak out, it's not real.